Welcome to another episode of Treasure Corals. Today is Sunday and usually I do a walk around one of my aquariums and uh, no, I have not forgotten about my treasure reef. But right now I'm dealing with an issue in my aquarium behind me. Uh, it's plumbed into a much bigger system, which is my whole coral farm. Um, I just posted a video earlier this week where I showed that some of my corals are peeling and I think I may have uh, a solution which I have found with the help of uh, Jake Adams uh, Reef Builders. So let's uh, dive right in. Nothing can be as frustrating as when you start losing corals and I actually have lost a fair bit. Um, this has been going on for, now that I think about it, for a few months and I could just not put my uh, ha finger on, I on it. Um, I, at some point it was my uh, forest fire digitata that would just close off its polyps. Then it would really be just a few individual coral species types. So primarily Mantipora. Um, I would not have lost any Acropora, or, um, although once in a while there would be like a bleaching in a red dragon but again it would be very odd one single piece uh, other uh, acropora no issue whatsoever but also my color colors for acropora have not been that great so i've spent a lot of time tinkering with the lights and um, with different regimens and uh, ph and whatnot but it just was not getting where i wanted uh, to go so what I'm using uh, this channel and one of the beauties of uh, talking to uh, old reefers out there is the collective mind. Sometimes you just kind of throw a question out and uh, sometimes you can get uh, an answer. So I shot a video earlier um, this week, I explained uh, what the situation is. I also have posted it on Reef to Reef and there's been lots of great feedback both um, from the YouTubers that watch my channel and I appreciate every one of them and I'm still going through uh, some of the re replies and I still need to do more testing but also um, I have had uh, Jake Adams uh, from Reef Builders um, reach out to me and basically he said that he thinks that he knows what the problem is or he's basically just using his experience um, dealing with many many aquariums out there so I guess 20 years uh, means something, so um, I've definitely listened and it was uh, also quite a pleasure to uh, talk to the man himself. But basically he thinks that uh, most likely it would have been a copper issue. So um, I am, uh, to everybody who suggested an ICP test, I've uh, actually uh, gone to Reef Paradise uh, here locally and I uh, bought an um, a fauna marine ICP test. Um, I've taken the water from this aquarium as well as my uh, freshly made salt water and uh, today basically it should be um, in, in the mail or tomorrow and by the end of the week maybe by the time you're watching the next Sunday video uh, we might have some more information but for now coming back to copper um, I do have um, um, I have had a spare Hannah Checker uh, copper because I manufactured the caddies uh, for them and basically I have every single one of them. I never really test my copper. Um, I don't use copper in any of my systems. So I was like, okay, sure. So, well, um, I immediately went in and I did some measurements and uh, lo and behold, I did find copper in my system. It's fairly low, but it was fairly consistent. So the values were ranging from 0.05, I had uh, 0.04, 0.02, sometimes even zero, but um, definitely there must have been something. So um, now I invite you on a journey on um, what I think have uh, caused this particular issue. So in this aquarium here, I'm measuring 0 0.03, 0 0.04 on average copper. Um, so I'm actually taking uh, the measurement from multiple aquariums from this one and the one on the left. Um, I think that one was zero. 
This one I've done three measurements. They were 0, 0, 0.05, 0 0.02, and 0 0.04. So probably an average of about 0 0.03. Uh, next, I will talk about what I think is the cause. And um, once again, a huge thanks to uh, Jake for telling me that it might be copper. Um, so basically I'm using this HANA checker. Let's take a look at it here. So this is my fancy station where I am doing all the measurements. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to recheck um, HANA with HANA Copper to see what my measurements are today because I've actually introduced a little bit of uh, Arovafos, about 250 grams that are running passively in this section over here. So basically just in a filter floss, I put it in a bag. So we'll see what the measurements are here. But more importantly, I think you all are interested to find out what could be the cause, as was I. So first and foremost, what I've done is I've taken every one of my trusty MP40s and I've verified that none of them were um, covered in rust. Now having said that, when I was replacing it with um, a few spares that I have, there was one that actually was blown up. So, oh, and here, here's another coral that is exhibiting that same peeling symptom. So you can see all of these anacropora here are not doing very well. So, um, I've also then gone through all of the other equipment I've removed. I had a couple of uh, Tanzi uh, small power heads, so I just removed them. I didn't find any rust. And then I did find um, that I was running a UV sterilizer, the Turbo Twist. So I'll show you now what uh, was inside. And uh, it wasn't too bad, actually. So that's my messy workbench. But basically, I watched the BRS video where uh, they were saying that this Turbo Twist uh, by Coralife has had some rust. And I've taken my apart. I completely forgot that I was actually running this thing. It was running passively, so I had water running through it. But I was not... Sorry about the birds. Or no. Um, so I was just running some water through it. So one thing that I did notice is that I could not actually take this um, bulb out. So everything kind of got stuck. Now I don't see any rust here or any other corrosion, but what I started doing is I was just trying to cut into it just to see what was going on. So I didn't see any issues on the turbo twist other than this kind of stuck ceramic. So the bulb itself was intact. But then I did also look at the reflector and the reflector is this piece of kind of foil slash metal that again doesn't exhibit any rust. What you see here is just uh, some sort of a detritus that's stuck, but it's not uh, what has been causing it. So anyways, I've actually tossed this whole thing, as you can see, so I just kept it to show you what it was. So now, could it have been leaching something? I don't know. So let me know if you think that that could be an issue. And um, let's move on to something else uh, that was a sub uh, suspect. So we're back in the fish room and what I started doing next is I started to check my source water. So I have these two containers. Uh, one is salt water on the left and this is freshly made fresh water. And first I checked my salt water and my salt water was running 0.04 copper. So, not a lot of fun. I then did measure my uh, fresh water and this one was running 0 0.02. So now I did have two tonsies in here that were basically, you know, I was using the power heads to stir and mix. But once I disassembled it, I didn't actually see um, rust. I'll show you what I found. Uh, there was just a tiny bit. So I was running these two tonsies and you can see there's uh, there's just some, I guess, sediment from reef crystals 
which I still need to clean, but here is the impeller. And in the impeller itself, it's actually, it doesn't look that bad now. Um, but I did find that one of them had just a tiny bit of like red specks or whatnot. So I don't think that was actually what was causing the issue. So what else could it have been? And then I started thinking and I realized that what I'm using to move the water from one container into another is my very old Waveline um, pump that basically I never keep inside so I would only use it for three four minutes just to transfer the water well seven minutes technically uh, to move the water from this aquarium sorry from this tank to this tank so I started looking at that and this is what I have found so it was rusty on the inside so basically there was some rust on the outside and then I think these four inlets for screws so the screws themselves uh, I don't think have rusted but and the impeller itself I think was okay but uh, there was definitely some rust here now is that rust enough to cause to have caused this particular issue I don't know so uh, probably my copper is not very high so maybe that could have been the root cause again uh, if you're watching this and have some thoughts on this please uh, let me know if this could be the actual culprit what I'm going to do is I'm going to retest both the salt water that I'm going to make but it's gonna take a while for me to make new batches because I've completely tossed all of the salt water and uh, fresh water and then um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to measure my current copper in the aquarium to see if um, the FOSS, rubber FOSS have actually, has actually helped bring it down. So 13 seconds while we wait, if anybody can tell me who this uh, type of mollusk is or what type of mollusk is this, um, please again <laughs> right in the comments below this is some sort of a flat looking uh, guy that has just come about and here it is so my phosphates are measuring at 0 0.05 still so I've had some row of phos running that doesn't seem to be bringing it down very quickly anyways so um, should I increase the amount of row of phos? I don't want to go too fast either and I'm trying to uh, feed the fish more because otherwise there's definitely going to be a shock to um, the aquarium. So again, let me know, critique my, uh, my process. Um, I'm thinking of maybe increasing the amount to another 250 grams of rohophos. Uh, remember my total water volume is about 400 gallons I think. So. That's where we are, so let me know. So that's uh, my uh, little story for this week. Um, I, I'm still puzzled. Uh, maybe I'm still missing something. Let me know if uh, there's more things I could be doing. I can't wait to get my fauna uh, ICP test uh, in a week. But more importantly, how do I bring it down? So do I just double uh, up on the row of us? Um, do I go and get the Cupri Sorb by Seacam. Uh, do I go with a product from Fauna Marin? Um, so I'm open to suggestions, but also how do I make sure that nothing else crashes in the aquarium? So how do I ride that wave? I also think that this is going to be quite helpful to other reefers out there because this seems like a fairly common pro problem. If there's something else I should have checked, please uh, let me know. And uh, I just want to say I appreciate everybody's uh, good wishes as well as uh, insight. This is what uh, makes um, doing this particular channel uh, so much fun and uh, it's basically me um, getting uh, great support uh, from you guys and gals. So with that said, um, let's see where we are in a week. Just a reminder, I try to do these videos every Sunday at 5 p.m. EST. 
but also now I'm thinking that um, once in a while I may do a much shorter video just focusing on a particular topic that uh, is a concern of mine maybe it's going to be a little bit less editing that basically um, can um, address a particular topic so with that said um, see you next Sunday